There is just one statement that concludes manifestation, and that is consciousness is the only reality. I know you have heard about it again and again, but have you stopped for a while and observed it? Have you ever wondered what this statement implies? What does it actually mean when it comes to manifestation? What is it about this one single statement that sums up manifestation? If you haven't, then I will give you some insights on it, and they will massively change the way you look at manifestation. When you understand this, you will no longer think contrary to the state of your fulfilled desire. When someone says that consciousness is the only reality, it means that your awareness is the only reality. Whatever you are aware of is the only reality. So whatever you are focused on is what you are experiencing. Therefore, stop reacting to the physical world. It looks so rigid because you are too focused on it. Whenever a problem arises, people start focusing on it. By focusing on it, the problem starts becoming big. They should instead focus on the solution to overcome the problem. This makes sense, right? So, whenever it comes to manifestation, instead of focusing on the old story that limits you, you should shift your attention to the state of the wish fulfilled. As you move your attention away from the current limitations to the state of having your desire, your focus changes. You are now aware of the new reality because consciousness is the only reality. It gets manifested in your reality. So, stop trying to change the outer physical world. Just become aware of your desired reality. The thing you want already exists. You already have what you want. Creation is finished. Your loyalty towards the state of the wish fulfilled will determine its physical manifestation. Also, the feeling of the wish being fulfilled doesn't have to be anything extraordinary. It doesn't have to be something major. It is a very simple thing. Like holding a book, smelling the food feeling the sun's rays, holding hands. All of these things, if experienced internally, are just the feeling of a wish being fulfilled. The law states that your imagination is God. Imagination creates reality. It is just about imagination. As I told you above, consciousness is the only reality. That means whatever you are conscious of is your reality. Now, if you want something that you don't have, you just have to become conscious of it, which you do by imagining it. You imagine it. You experience it in your mind's eye, and by doing so, you become conscious of it, and since consciousness is the only reality, you become aware of it. It gets manifested in the external reality. It is that simple. Just give up wondering how and when it will happen. It already happened when you imagined it and filled your awareness with the idea of having it. It exists, you have it right now. Just close your eyes and experience it. Now, imagination is not just limited to visual scenes. Visual scenes are just part of the imagination. Imagination is vast. You can taste something in your imagination, feel something in your imagination, listen to something, and feel the vibrations. Whatever you can experience in the physical world, you can experience it in your imagination too. Also, you can experience what is not there in the physical world yet. Your beliefs, commitments, interests, preferences, and dislikes are also imaginary. From the time you wake up until the time you sleep, you are living in an imaginary world. The law works perfectly fine. Yesterday, I was at a friend's place. We went to the market to get some stuff for the house party. We visited several quick-service restaurants. Then I was thinking of getting some sweets. A guy said out of the blue that he was going to the sweet shop. Here, in a sweet shop, there are 50 different varieties of sweets. In my mind, I wanted a particular sweet. So, I said in my mind to the subjective image of that person to bring that particular sweet. Well, it's not like if I didn't get that sweet, I would go mad. I just told that particular sweet name to the subjective image of the guy in my mind. Then we went to the house and started the house party. At night, we opened the sweet boxes, and there was this particular sweet I wanted, waiting for me in the box. Now, for some, they might say it is a coincidence and it does not matter. It is not a huge thing. But instances like these developed faith within us. Another incident happened last night. There is a friend of mine with whom I have talked almost every day in the past year. So, in January, we got busy with our lives. We were barely in contact with each other. We last talked at the end of January. So, like two to three days ago, I was thinking about her. It was just a thought. I don't even remember what I was thinking about. Then, last night, out of the blue, she texted me, asking how I was, and we had this conversation. Again, some would say it is not a huge thing. Well, nothing is big or small, it is our perception. But it developed my faith again. Also, there was an instance where I ordered something for my car. The product was out for delivery at 8 a.m. Generally, the products I order gets delivered to me around 6 to 8 p.m. Now, at 3 p.m., I had to travel to another city. So, in my mind while taking the bath, I told myself that I would take that product along with me. The delivery guy will reach me in the next few minutes. I kid you not, the delivery guy came exactly after 15 minutes and I took the product along with me on my journey. Again, a small thing for some people, but it is huge enough to maintain the faith. 
Like these, there are countless stories that I experience every day that I will share in some other videos, from manifesting money to cars to specific persons to free stays. Everything works out in my favor. So, I hope this video gave you some clarity about the law and its application. Subscribe for more such videos. I will meet you with another golden nugget. Happy manifesting!